Hey guys, out in the garage again for another day of working on the airplane. It's another 20 degree day, so I've got the heater running and uh, dressed a little more warmly. Uh, I've not talked much about priming. Uh, so one of the chapters uh, in building this process, uh, this airplane, said, you know, you can prime or not prime, it's up to you. Going back and forth on the forums, a lot of people have differing opinions as to whether or not you should prime or shouldn't prime. Most of this is aluminum, so I think I think you could probably never prime it and still be flying in 20 years. But there still seems to be a very high percentage of individuals who think priming is really important. And so I think uh, just for resale value alone, priming is probably a good idea. Now having said that, I've gone the most bare bones, basic route possible. Uh, some people get really, really in depth and crazy. I went with a rattle can. I'm not saying it's the best method by any stretch of the meeting, but it sure is the simplest. Here you see the uh, self-etching primer can there at top and some of the pieces that I've already primed. I just take them out in the driveway, put them on a cardboard box, spray them down, and you end up with primed parts. Um, I don't think it's necessary, but again, for resale value down the road, I don't want to eliminate half my market by not doing something they might have felt was important. Once I got everything all primed up and ready to go, I uh, gathered up my trusty riveting tools and used the squeezer to begin riveting for the very first time on the very first part, which is riveting the stops onto the bottom of the rudder hinge. Now I will say the squeezer is an amazing tool. It's, it really makes things a lot easier. It took me a little while to figure out uh, how to use it so that I don't both over squeeze or under squeeze. And that's a combination of pressure uh, as well as having uh, the little shims in place uh, in the event that you don't have a, a real thick part. But uh, once I got that sorted out, it really made short work of this. I mean, you see me doing uh, all three of these in the span of, you know, less than a minute. Uh, and I had done the other ones just as fast. So uh, it's just a great tool. All right. Riveted. Aha! One incredible disadvantage of uh, priming, which really didn't occur to me until, well, right about here in the video, was that uh, all that match drilling that I had done up to this point was now kind of worthless because I have to re-drill to get the little bit of paint out of there because the rivet wouldn't fit through the hole anymore. Uh, before it would, because I had checked that, after the paint, that just little bit of paint was enough to make it so that I had to re-drill out that hole. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind if you're going to be doing priming. Another thing to keep in mind when using the squeezer is that the very first couple of times you use it, you're going to have to set your pressure accordingly. Uh, there's a little dial on the bottom of mine that allows me to set or regulate uh, the amount of pressure, and you're going to have to adjust it accordingly. Once you get it all dialed in and adjusted, it works like a charm, but it does take a couple tries and, you know, clicking it back and forth until you get it dialed into the right uh, pressure settings. And of course, with me, it took me a couple extra tries because I'm special like that. But once I got it all done, it was just a matter of zipping through and doing the rest of the work and getting it all set. Uh, this was fairly painless actually. Um, I only did the top 12 or so rivets, but uh, you know, it was a really good start for getting this whole thing done. Once I got into actually riveting the rest of the rear spar, it became readily apparent that the squeezer wasn't really going to work because the throw from the edge of the piece to where the actual rivet was going to be was just too far. Uh, so I had to pull out the old titanium or I'm sorry, tungsten bucking bar and the the rivet gun and get after it. Worked out really well. I actually was pleasantly surprised at how easy it was. This is taking forever. Hey, get back to work, you. No, really, it wasn't that bad. In fact, I kind of found it enjoyable. I mean, here you were taking a bunch of pieces and parts and putting them together using time-honored and traditional methods. It was kind of cool. And in the end, we ended up with a part with everything riveted like it's supposed to be. 
So there we go. We've done some riveting. How cool is that? First time I've ever riveted something before. Not perfect. Um, but I went through and I, went, I was testing with the various little testing tools and it's together. This is a solid piece of aluminum, except for these side pieces, obviously, which will come uh, when we put the skin on. But yeah, so there you go. All my flush rivets. Actually, I thought these were going to be the hard ones. They turned out to be much easier. Some of these have a little bit of marks on them uh, where the tool kind of skipped off. But eventually I learned how to hold it a little better and uh, got that down. I think once I <clears throat> recoat this with my primer, this will look perfect. So, very cool.